Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to the uh, presenters and participants of the second international conference on education, social science and engineering 2020. <clears throat> I am Nur Azla Abdul Wahab. Uh, I am representing uh, my uh, research group members to present uh, our research paper entitled Legal Framework of the Advisor of the Court for Children in Malaysia. As introduction, the establishment of the Court for Children is originated from the Juvenile Court which has been introduced since 1947 through the Juvenile Court Ordinance. By virtue of the Child Act 2001, the Court for Children has been established as to provide legal protection to the children whether they are brought to the court as offenders or victims of criminal acts of the other persons. Section 11, subsection 5 of the Child Act 2001 provide that the Court for Children will adjudicate all criminal cases committed by children other than cases sentenced with the death penalty. As regards to the composition of the court itself, apart from the magistrate who give orders to the child offenders, there are two court advisors who will assist the magistrate, as stated in Section 11, Subsection 2 of the Child Act 2001. <clears throat> as regard to this research paper, basically, we overcome several problem statements as regard to the court advisor for children. The first one is when <clears throat> Section 11 of the Child Act is too general and was the only provision related to the court advisor. And secondly, there are no other legal provisions, regulations or any guidelines are discussing on the mechanism of execution of the duties of the court advisors, their criterias of appointment, training, module and others. Thus, the objective of this research paper is to identify the legal framework of the advisor of the court for children in Malaysia, particularly the jurisdiction, mechanism of execution of duties, the appointment criteria for the court advisors, modules and training involved. And for that, <clears throat> um, the methodology uh, that we use yeah, in, pro in producing this paper, it is based on the document analysis whereby an analysis has been made on academic journals and some legal documents such as Child Act 2001 and Juvenile Court Act 1947. And we also conducted semi-structured interview with the Department of the Social Welfare, JKM, of Minister of Women, Family uh, and <clears throat> Ministry of Women, Family and Community Development, KPWKM, and also Legal Affairs Division, Bahagian Hal Ehwal Undang Undang, Bahayu of Prime Minister's Department. Okay, and uh, there are several findings yeah, in, our, in our research paper, which is <clears throat> uh, there are several legal framework yeah, of the advisor of the court for children. Uh, first one, yeah, as regard to the jurisdiction, power and functions of the child court advisor and the second one mechanism of execution of duties of the court uh, of the uh, court advisor and then criteria and appointment and the last one is regard to the training in module for the uh, children court advisor okay so the first one we're going to look at the jurisdiction power and function according to section 11 subsection 4 of the child act 2001 the function of court uh, for children advisor is to advise the court or magistrate in giving orders to the child who is in conflict with the law and if necessary to advise the parents or guardians of the child. However, section 90, sub, um, subsection 18 of the Child Act 2001 uh, provide that the advice of the court advisor is not binding upon the magistrate. Magistrate, however, magistrate needs to record the reason why he did not agree to accept the advice or opinions of the advisor. Uh, relating to the mechanism of execution of duties, basically we find that no regulations or any guidelines are discussing on the mechanism of execution of duties of the court advisor. The court, <clears throat> the children court advisor will be involved throughout the proceeding of the case. The court advisor will submit their views and advice upon requested by the magistrate. 
if necessary, the advice can be made directly to the parents or guardians of the child. And <clears throat> there are several advice given by the child court advisor, among others, the role and involvement of the parents and guardians to the well-being of the children, uh, advice on the parenting skills, the children's education, future career training, as well as religious and spiritual matters. Even there are no guidelines or manuals regarding the implementation and monitoring of the duties of the children court advisor, but they are still be bound by existing court rules, especially during the proceeding and the provisions of the Child Act 2001. The second one is as regard to the criteria and appointment. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there are several criteria has been list down yeah, uh, by the JKM. Okay, among others, the child court advisor must be a Malaysian citizen, not less than 40 years old and not more than 70, uh, 75 years old. Academic qualification at least SPM and MCE, SPMV, fluent in speaking and can write in Bahasa Malaysia and English, have a good health, not a bankrupt, uh, government or private retirees who are active and knowledgeable in aspect of child development and welfare and also a resident in the area where the location of the court for children is located. Okay, And then as regard to the appointment of the child court advisor, uh, basically social welfare department of Ministry of Women, Family and Community Development is the body who is doing the selection and screening of the child court advisor. Whereas Legal Affairs Division, Bahyu, yeah, of the Prime Minister Department, will do the appointment of the child court advisor and the appointment letter will be issued by Minister of the Prime Minister Department. Okay, and then as regard to the training and module, <clears throat> the training is basically conducted by JKM. It is normally in the form of talk, group sessions and discussion, as well as mock trial. However, there is no ruling on the frequency of training because it is basically depends on the state social welfare office, or at least it will be conducted once upon the appointment of the new children court advisor. Um, regarding the module, uh, in 2013, JKM, in collaboration with the Faculty of Law University Malaya, has developed a court advisor module for children. And the content of the module is on the legal system in Malaysia, court procedure for children, the role of court of children advisor, the Child Act 2001, and it orders court ethic and also mock trial. Okay, and then <clears throat> uh, uh, what we can conclude yeah, in our research paper, certainly the role of the children court advisor is significant in the juvenile justice system in Malaysia, but yeah, with some uh, but some improvement are suggested. Okay, so the first one, as regard to the jurisdiction, the provision under the Child Act 2001 will be taken into consideration. Although Section 117 of the Child Act 2001 allows the High Court to carry out its functions in accordance with the Criminal Procedure Code. Okay. And then it is urgent yeah, to provide some guidelines or manual regarding the implementation and monitoring of the duties of the child court advisor as regard to the criteria to consider those who are, have a work-related background involving children, a community member, or the non-governmental organization's activists and having knowledge in child psychology. And regarding the module, to upgrade the module with the latest amendment of the law, for example, uh, in the Child Act, yeah, it has uh, um, there is amendment yeah, as regard to the Child Act 2001, and also uh, to introduce the new act relate, uh, related with the children, for example, sexual uh, offences uh, against children 2017, is it need to be included yeah, in the module. And the last one to suggest that the training will be conducted regularly. <clears throat> okay, so with that, <clears throat> we thank you, uh, all of you, for listening our presentations. That's all.